Hi everybody, so this is going to be Unit 1, Lesson 3, Video Notes, and in this video we're going to be talking about two different learning targets. The first one is I can write a limit statement using correct notation that references a given function. So again, we're, we're working on writing the correct notation here. As we discussed in the last video, the notation that we use when we write a limit is really important because it conveys the meaning of our mathematical thinking. If we don't use the correct notation, then sometimes our mathematical sentence doesn't make sense. The second learning target today is that we are going to estimate a one-sided or two-sided limit using the graph of a known function. Now this is where we're going to differ from our previous video. In our previous video, we were looking at graphs that we had already been given. Now we are going to be looking at graphs of known functions. Now when I say a known function, what I mean is one of the, the graphs that's listed on the next page and a half or so of your notes. I'm not going to go through these graphs one at a time. What we did is we just provided you the picture to remind you what it should look like. Each of these is the graph of a function that you have studied at some point during the last few years of your mathematical education at the high school level. So I, these are things that you kind of need to go through and review and memorize and make sure you understand how they look. So we've got the graph of y equals x, the absolute value of x, x squared, x cubed, a cubed root, 1 over x, 1 over x squared, the natural log function, e to the x, and then we've got some other graphs here. We've got our square root function, our semicircle function, our sine, cosine, tangent, and inverse tangent functions. These are all common functions that come up. And in addition to knowing these graphs, we're also going to need to understand how to use transformations to change the shapes of these graphs, which is something we'll discuss in the following practice questions. Um, again, I'm not going to go through the details of these graphs with you. These are things you should study on your own. But these are the types of questions that you would be expected to answer using this knowledge. So it says here, use your knowledge of parent functions and transformations to evaluate each of the limits below. So the first one says the limit as x is approaching negative infinity of the x cubed function. The first step here in my mind would be to sketch a picture of this graph. So because I know my, my parent functions, I know that x cubed is a function that looks like this. Now if I'm trying to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative infinity, on the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis, negative infinity is over here. So what we're trying to do is figure out what happens to the y values of the function as we go to the left as far as we can imagine. Well, if I follow this graph to the left, I'm also going to be following the graph down. And that means the y values are approaching negative infinity. So the answer to this limit would be negative infinity. For problem number two, it says find the limit as x approaches zero of the absolute value of x plus two. Now again, I'm going to use my knowledge of parent functions here. I know that an absolute value function is shaped like a v and that this plus two is going to shift my graph up two spaces. So instead of the corner of the V being located at the origin, the corner of the V would be located up here, up two spaces. Now this is a two-sided limit because it does not specify that we're approaching zero from the left or from the right. So I'm going to check what happens on both sides. As I approach zero from the left and from the right, both sides are approaching this point on the graph, which has a y value of 2. So my answer would be 2. For problem number 3, it says find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of the function 1 over x. Now because I know my parent functions, I know that the sketch of the graph of the function 1 over x looks like this where there is a vertical asymptote at the zero. So if I approach zero from the left, I'm looking at this side of the graph, the left side approaching zero, I'm going to be going down towards negative infinity in the y values. So my answer is going to be negative infinity. 
For problem number four, it's the graph of um, the limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 2 squared. So what I know is that unlike this problem where the plus 2 shifted me up two places, if this shift is inside of the parentheses by the x, it's going to take my x squared function and shift it to the right two spaces. If this said plus 2, I would actually be going left two spaces. Now my x squared function is a parabola, so it's going to look like this but just shifted to the right two spaces. Now again, this is a two-sided limit because there is no little plus or little minus in the notation. So if I approach the two from the left or from the right, both sides are approaching this point on the graph, which has a y value of zero. For problem number five, it says evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x. Now e to the x is the exponential function, which looks like this. If I ask you to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity, we need to remember that on the graph, infinity on the x-axis just means go to the right as far as you can imagine. As I follow this graph to the right, I'm also going to be going up, which means the y values are approaching infinity. For problem number six, we're finding the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function e to the x. So same graph, only instead of going to the right as far as we can imagine, we're going to be going to the left, which is this way. As I go to the left, I'm approaching the horizontal asymptote on this graph, which is a y value of 0. All right, super short video. Again, the key here is really you just need to know what these graphs look like, and you need to be able to shift them around. So I would recommend making sure that I study these graphs and possibly even turning them into flashcards if that would be helpful so that I would have them known to me so I could evaluate these limits efficiently. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.